Hey everybody, welcome back. Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at post-processing shaders on our existing scene that we've already created. Um, without further ado, I'm going to hop in here and show you what we have going on. Alright, so you'll see I have this nice little scene right here and we're uh, actually putting on the film pass post-processing shader onto said scene and it's creating this kind of this scan line effect. Now I'm going to open up the DACUI interface and you'll see that I have a N intensity, S intensity, S count, and a grayscale count. Okay, these are called uniforms. They're passed through to the post-processing shader as values that you can kind of adjust and modify your scene. So you'll notice that with my N intensity, if I bring that down, that's going to bring down the overall intensity or strength of the actual shader. As well as the S intensity, it's going to bring down the intensity of the scan line, so that stands for scan line intensity, and then the S count, this is going to be the uh, the width of the scan line. So if I bring this, if I adjust this one, I can you can see how I can just bring it all the way up. All right, and this is really powerful. So the grayscale is going to be a Boolean operation that goes from gray, well, blue, or gray colored, gray gray colored. Okay, so this is cool, okay? We get this nice TV effect. How do we go about creating set effect? All right, let me let me open up brackets real quick. Now, first thing you need to do is whenever you're dealing with these uh, shaders is you need to load up a ton of files in order to get this to work. You need to load up first. You need your copy shader, and I'm going to organize this just so you can see so that we have everything a little bit nice. Nice. All right, so first you need your effects composer, your render pass, your mass pass, the shader pass, and the film pass, okay? Basically, your mass pass is going to um, create a mask that allows you to uh, choose um, where what gets, um, what is essentially going to be uh, affected by the shader. Uh, and then you have your shader pass, which is shader, copy shader, film shader, uh, and then the RGB shift shader, okay? So all of these are going to be necessary in order to get this to work, okay? Um, minus RGB shift shader, we don't necessarily need that. There's just another effect that I've uh, placed on there, okay? And then we have the film shader. This is the one going to be the one that we're actually going to take a look at and see what is kind of underneath the hood on it. Okay, so why don't we go back into our main.js file and take a look and see how this is all kind of going to come together. Okay, so the first thing to note is that I have these, and what they're called is uniforms, and this is written in C-sharp, and I've added these to our GUI control panel, the N intensity, S intensity, S count, grayscale count. Okay, so this is pretty standard stuff for the DAC GUI. We've gone over this a, a whole bunch of times, so I'm not going to go over it again. Um, <clears throat> but the next thing you're, go you're going to notice is that we have a new uh, variable or object, I want to say, um, and that is the composer. And we define it as a global up top, and it's new 3.effect composer, and we're sticking our renderer into, into here, okay? So after we stick our renderer into there, we're going to add a pass, and that is going to be a new render pass, and that render pass is going to be what typically we would just do as kind of just render, you know, scene and camera, okay? We're actually sticking it in as a pass into our composer object, okay? And then we're sticking, we're creating an effect that's a shader pass, okay? And we're going to put that effect as a pass into our composer, composer object, and then I'm going to create a second effect, and I'm going to put that as a pass into our composer object, okay? And then you'll see that I have these uniforms up top here that are that each are being assigned values that I'm based off of my GUI controls right there. I'm um, using the, the the this method um, basically. And I'm assigning those values to it, and that's the time, A minus the time, and intensity, S intensity, S count, grayscale, okay? And then you'll also see that I'm creating a clock right here, okay? The clock is going to be important for changing, for, uh, changing the value of this time, okay? And I'll show you what this time is going to do 
uh, in a little bit. Actually, we'll go down to the bottom and I'll show you what where I'm getting that value right there. Okay. So you'll see again standard stuff GUI controls. Um, the one big difference that we're doing here is that as opposed to how we had it set up before, we're using the renderer in the composer to call everything. So that's the big change. This this one right here. You need the you need this if you're using post processing effects to actually uh, render out the scene. All right. Another thing that you'll notice is that I am checking the the change of time on that clock. I'm setting it into a variable, and I'm setting that change as the value of time right in here. So that's getting passed in that time. All right, so let's take a look at the film shader and see what's going on here underneath the hood. All right, so here's our uniforms. Uniforms essentially with post-processing, variables that you can change to affect your post-processing post effects. That's a tongue twister right there. All right, so here's our default values, okay? Then we have our vertex shader. We're not worrying about this. Vertex shaders are not really that important for this one. This is a kind of a hello world of vertex shaders right here. Um, this is just about as default as you can get uh, for vertex shaders. This just basically makes sure that the program runs. The big one is the fragment shaders. That's where all everything is going, getting changed. Okay, and you'll see that it's nice and commented out. We have control parameters. Noise intensity, okay, scan lines, uh, effect, and so on. All right, now the big thing with the noise intensity is that in order to make the noise, you need time, okay? You need this value. So if you don't have a value set for time that changes, it's not going to give you the appearance of the time. It's not going to give you that kind of, um, Gaussian blur, Gaussian uh, noise appearance, where everything is just kind of shifting a little bit. So you need to put in a value that changes, hence the delta, in order for this time to work. Okay, and then the rest of these values you're pushing through, standard, um, basically using the DAC GUI interface. Uh, you can manually set these, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. The only thing that's weird about this is the syntax that's being used, and that's because they haven't agreed on. This is written, of course, this is all written in C, um, and they have it written out in such a way that it's kind of easy to 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 read. But really, it's not agreed upon on how to organize this stuff and parse it. So they're just kind of using this format to write everything. Which seems really strange, but it works. It just kind of mashes everything together um, in the end. Anyways, so that's kind of it for the post-processing. I think this stuff is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to post a link to it so that you guys can kind of uh, review it. Always remember that whenever I post links to any of these things, um, I am referencing stuff a little bit differently because I have... because. Um, I'm sticking stuff in the cloud essentially, so my um, URLs are going to be different uh, always. All right, so again, just to leave you with this awesome scene. Very, 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 very cool. I think it look, I think it turned out great. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, my name is Patrick, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey.